Welcome back, Cat from Scratch, episode 11. In this video, I want to revisit a previous topic, which was our rendering. I want to actually improve what we had before in a couple different ways. First, previously we had a very uh, flat 2D, almost monochromal um, representation of what we're looking at without any sense of depth. So we had like wireframes, we had solid uh, fills, right? Um, but because we didn't ha really have a sense of depth, if things were in front of other things, like if we had two wireframe faces like this, you know, you would see both faces overlapping each other. Obviously, you know, in reality, you, you wouldn't have that. You'd have a face like, you know, like this. You wouldn't have faces blocking each other, you know, or you wouldn't, you wouldn't have faces seen behind each other in, uh, you know, in typical impl implementation of this kind of software. And for that, we need to implement depth. It's not a huge change, but uh, a change nonetheless. Then I also want to be able to uh, customize our display. So adding different colors for the, the edges, colors for the fills, different background color, and do all those things in a very nice and neat way. So without any further ado, let's just get started. I have to change a few files here. Um, the main file, just for our test case, as well as the two draw files, draw.c, draw.h, and that's pretty much it. So let's start off with uh, draw.h. I want to add a few things here. First, you know what, let's just get rid of this draw function. Who needs that? That's from a previous video, but we're not using that kind of um, program anymore. So I want to have a, a, a color structure and in that color structure, I want to have uh, three floats, R, float G, and float B. And in OpenGL, um, these floats are between zero and one. So that'd be zero dot F or one dot F, you know, for example. And then I also want to have a structure for the, the draw style. I always do things in caps for some reason. I think I because I have <laughs> a problem. <laughs> um, so I want to have a couple things. Uh, I need three colors. I need the color for the fill, fill color. Also line color and background color. I want to also have a uh, a value. It could be an int. It could be an, an enum, whatever you want. I'm going to say it's a car just for the mode. And we're going to say a mode of zero equals lines only, one equals, well, I guess fills only, and two equals both. Yeah, that's, that's fine. And then lastly, um, for now at least, we're going to add a float line width that will uh, we can use that to change how thick the wireframe edges are gonna, are gonna be. On top of this, um, I wanna have like a kind of default constructor so you don't have to always come over here and you know manually populate all these different values in these structures. I wanna make a function that does it for me. So I'm just gonna say struct draw style pointer uh, default draw style. And I'm just going to literally output a, a default draw style. We'll say void with no inputs. And then for this draw body, this is what we used before to actually render the model to the screen. Let's just change the, let's add one parameter to this. Let's say struct draw style, draw style. Yeah. That, that would be kind of passed in our, our custom rendering, you know, uh, structures here and and draw things in a custom way. So we're done with this file at this point. Now in draw.c, um, we're gonna be malloking some stuff, so we will need, I think, standard lib. If not, I guess we'll find out. I think it's standard lib.h. Now, let's just, before we actually implement those, those lines of code, let me just talk about our, our vertex and our fragment shaders. So, So 
let me see. So previously we had a very flat implementation of our uh, of our render. So this GL position is kind of the the coordinates in space that the vertex shader is going to be passing along um, that it's, that's actually drawing the vertex at. And we have uh, four components in this vector. Obviously, the first one is something that's scaled to x. The second one is something scaled to you know in the y direction, and then the third value sh should be something, but here we have it as zero, if you can see. So really what we have to do is just literally copy and paste this, uh, you know, this y value or x value over here and change a couple things. And if you have a question as to why that is, you can go watch the previous video. Uh, and I just let, made it zero just for simplicity's sake, but in reality, um, the same uh, math works in, in the z coordinate as well. We're just going to change u2 to u3. So we're dotting the, the u3 with the the difference between the position of the for the vertex and the look at coordinate. And if you have a question about that, you can look at the previous video and you'll see. But pretty much that is the biggest change we have to make to our vertex shader to accommodate a depth concept. In addition, um, I want to add something to the fragment shader. And that's going to be another uniform. Now, uniforms are shared in between the vertex and radix shaders, so you, you could put them in, um, in in either one or the other. But we're going to put this here. So we have a frag color we need. We also need a uniform. So I'll say uniform vec3 RGB. That's going to be what we're going to pass into our fragment shaders, or actually both shaders. Um, to control the color. So uniform VEC3 RGB, and this fragment color is not just going to be 0, 1, 0, which is uh, green, right, RGB. We're going to pass in those, those actual values. So we'll say RGBX, RGBY, RGBZ. And we have to do a couple more things later on to make this work, but we'll get, that, get there in a, in a few minutes. So now I'll make some more functions here that we will need uh, in the upcoming, at least this video and probably the next video as well. Um, the first one's going to be the actual uh, default draw style thing that we just defined in the header file. <clears throat> so what was that? That was a struct, uh, was it draw style, default draw style. So now um, this is just going to be a function that returns uh, a, you know, a default draw style that we don't want to have to customize every time. We could, but I don't want to have to populate those huge structures manually every time. Having a function that does it for me is uh, sort of the way you do things. Um, so we'll just define the, the structure that we're going to return here. So struct draw style. We'll say draw style equals struct draw style. I hope I can remember how to do this. Malloc size of struct draw style. That should be good. Now the same thing has to be done for the colors because remember there's three colors per draw style. So we'll say uh, fill color. So fill, line, and background. We'll call that back, I guess. And um, now we can just go ahead and start defining these things. So uh, fill R equals something. Fill G is something, and fill B is something. Now let's say we want to keep the fills green by default. So let's just say 0.1F. 0. Point, or I guess 1.0f, 0.1f. That's like a sort of very calm green color. And then we can pop that into the draw style structure by saying draw style fill color, fill color equals uh, fill. Now this sort of logic can be copied and pasted twice more. 
one for the line and one for the background. So draw style line color equals line. And I guess we'll make the lines, let's make them blue. So array column blue color 0 0.1, 0 0.11. And then lastly, this background color, I think we called it BG color. Let's call this uh, BG just for consistency's sake. Okay. And the backgrounds, we'll keep them all black for now. We can change this all later. That's the whole point of having a default. Okay. Now the mode, we want the default mode. So draw style mode to be I think two was both, right? Both lines and fills. That'd be a colored wireframe for those that use traditional CAD software. And then lastly, I think the line width. So the, the width of the lines in the wireframe, we have to define that. So draw style line width equals, let's keep it at one just for the time being. Now we can return the draw style. There we go, that's our default function that will create a default draw style for us whenever we need to. Pretty simple. Now, this is something that I wanna implement now, but we won't really use it to its full potential until the next video or next few videos. And that's going to be RGB, um, an actual function that stores as an int uh, three coordinates, R, G, and B, both you know one byte values. And um, so we're storing like three bytes into a four byte uh, quantity here. And so um, I guess the process is very simple. We'll, we'll just define a small function for this. Um, we're going to pass an unsigned cars for R. And by the way, this, this is not for OpenGL. This is going to be for uh, the X window. The X window uses um, a different way to, to sort of, this doesn't use floats for R, G, and B. It uses a, an int R, G, B sort of quantity that cont contains all three components. And I'll explain that in a, in a few seconds. Um, R, G, and sign car, B. Let me return. And the composite is very simple. It's, it's just, they're just um, bit shifting. So we're returning um, R shifted 16 plus G shifted eight plus B. Very simple. Okay, now to get into the, uh, the bulk of this, I say bulk, but in reality it's only a few small things. Um, in our draw body function, remember we added a, a, a parameter here, which was struct draw style, draw style. Okay, so here's what I, what I meant. When we create this, when we use uh, this x create simple window function, Believe it or not, I, uh, these last two zeros correspond to the the um, black and white colors, or make say the foreground and background colors of the X window. And you can you can pull this manually from the uh, like the actual display that you're on. But honestly, it's usually just black and white. So we can really just encode this. We'll say RGB zero zero zero, and then RGB two five five. 255255. Yep. And we're never going to access this RGB function outside of uh, draw.c, so I'm not going to put it in the header file. But I guess if you wanted to, you, you probably could, but I'm not going to put it in there. So that's this. But then also for the depth, we have these attributes for uh, GLX. In this attribute list, we can add another one. We have, you know, GLX red size, green size, boot size. We don't have GLX depth size, which is actually required to have a, you know, an accurate depth buffer. Uh, we'll, we'll give it 24 bits. You can give it 32. I think you can give it eight, um, probably 16. So we'll just say uh, GLX depth size 24. And last one has to be none in this attribute list, if you recall from the previous video. 
I think that's it for most of this. We don't have to change pretty much any of this. Compile shaders, all that. Here's our code from previous video where we actually um, broke apart the data structures that we were using to code everything up. Um, okay, so down here is the first thing we have to actually change. These um, uniform locations, these are basically the locations in the shaders of all the variables that we're passing in. And if you recall, we did add a variable here. We added uh, RGB. So RGB location, shader program, RGB. Okay. All right, so here is where we're actually gonna do some, some adding in for the depth buffer. I'm going to comment this out for the time being. Um, there's a few things you have to do to have a, a, a depth test. So what, what is a depth test? A depth test is basically checking um, what's what face that you've drawn is in front of another face. What face should you actually sp spend time drawing to the screen and what parts of it? For that, you need a depth test. So it's very simple to create that. You just say GL enable uh, GL depth test. This is how you enable anything in OpenGL. And then there's, a, there's a, a value GL depth test, which you pass into that and it turns it on. You add a depth mask, GL depth mask, uh, true. And then a GL depth function. You can actually change how it evaluates how deep something is. Um, I think we'll keep it on GL less, but you can do less than or equal to, you can do greater than, you can turn everything backwards. And also there's something called GL depth range which I was playing around with, I didn't really find any uh, particular use for it. Maybe I will in, in a future video, but I'll just put it in here for just for the sake of it. Um, but I'll comment it out for, for us right now. You can kind of change where, where the, the depth range is cut off. Now, um, we also have to do something called uh, culling faces. So basically there's no reason to draw both sides of a face you know, if you only if if you have ways that you can identify which faces are on the outside of a body, and you have them always numbering their nodes clockwise or counterclockwise, you can always tell which face you should draw. You don't want to have to draw the backside of a face because it's going to be inside your part. So there's no reason to, to draw the backside, and if you don't want to draw it, it's called culling, culling those faces. Um, so we can uh, GL enable another thing. Uh, GL cull face. GL front face is GL clockwise. So we're considering we have, have a clockwise node counting scheme for our front faces, which I believe we do. Uh, if we ever don't, we can change this to counterclockwise and it will work just the same. And then we can say a GL cull face, GL back. So we're gonna cut all the back faces, faces that are uh, counterclockwise uh, numbered. So those vertices are not going to be rendered in that, in that order. Now, one thing, whenever we're going to be rendering lines and polygon, uh, like fills and lines both, so a wireframe and solid fill, we want to have a GL polygon offset. And the reason why is because if you draw a line and a fill in the same coordinates, you'll have Z fighting. Because they're drawn in the same exact three-dimensional space, the OpenGL doesn't know whether it should be drawing the line, the border, or the actual solid itself. And you'll have a a very weird visual effect. And so the way you can get around that is setting a, an offset in terms of uh, these these two values here. You can look up what they do in the in the manual. But uh, pretty much that's that's the gist of what we have to add in terms of uh, OpenGL uh, calls. I wanna add some other things though right here. Remember we, we do have a, di um, a draw style structure that we can access and one thing we might want to control is, for example, GL line width. You can pass in any value between, I think, like one and any any number as a float, and um, have that used as your wireframe line width. Um, but remember, we have this line width as a as a field in our structure, so we can just pull that. So we can say if draw style mode equals I think it was zero and two were both options that had lines. We just set this to uh, draw style. 
line width. See? So that's how you might want to use this um, the structure to control how you're going to operate on your on your render. Now, a couple more things I want to do. Let me just paste this in here for the time being. Um, in our actual render loop, this while one, there's one more thing to add for this GL clear. Every time we're going to redraw something to the screen or swap the buffers, I want to clear the depth buffer bit. So you can say GL. Was it? Is it a depth buffer bit? Yeah, I think it's a depth buffer bit. So that will clear both the color buffer bit and depth buffer bit. And it, right above this, you see this clear color. This is actually the background color. So we can simply replace this with draw style, background color, R. This one is draw style, background color, G. This one is uh, draw style, background color, B. Now, hmm, where should I put this? Yeah, probably right there. So now, um, to actually draw wireframes and fills, there's two different ways to do that. So um, if I go back up to the top, what I just commented out, if you recall, was this GL polygon mode. This GL line is what you're passing in to draw the triangles just as the wireframe. If this, instead of saying GL line said GL fill, you'd be drawing the filled structure, you know, without any lines. So we can actually call the filled one first and then the lines to draw both the fill and the lines. So that's, that's the actual plan here. So the first thing we'll do is we'll say if we want to draw the um, the fill, so that's going to be if it's mode one or mode two. We're going to just uh, GL enable something. We're going to en enable uh, the polygon offset. This basically tells uh, OpenGL to draw this one a little bit slightly off where it should be uh, inwards so that we can get the, um, the wireframe to not be hidden behind parts of this uh, fill. So GL enable GL polygon offset fill. Now we're, we have to pass in the color because remember we created a uniform for all these things, you know, U1, U2, U3. We also made a uniform for um, the actual color just in the beginning of this video. So we'll say uniform 3F RGB location. And for this, this being the fill color, we're passing in the uh, draw style fill color R draw style I'm bound to make 100 typos in this live coding. Fill color G, and then draw style, fill color B. Okay, and this one actually we can take, take out of the loop here. That's my mistake. That one doesn't have to be in the, in the if statement. Then we're going to draw the elements and then um, not swap buffer. That, that's for later. Oh, we need to have the polygon mode. So we'll say GL polygon mode, GL front and back. This is what I just had below. Uh, GL fill. <laughs> yep. So this 
said this if statement here will basically mean says if we wanted to draw the fills, we're going to turn on the offset, write the fill color into the um, uniform, actually set that as the way we're going to draw front and back GL fills, and then draw the elements. And then right after that, if the, if the mode is zero and two, that means if we're drawing the lines or two, sorry, um, then we can dis disable this, turn this off. Pass the uniform, but instead of having it be the fill color, it's going to be the line color. Polygon mode, front and back, but not GL fill, it's going to be GL line. And then draw elements. And then at that point, you add GLX swap buffers, and yeah, and then we're, we're cooking. So this, this honestly, I think is all we have to change in the actual functions um, for this. I do want to go now and edit the, the main function here, the main uh, file. And in this case, we're just gonna um, simply load that first balloon STL. We need to look at still, I guess we'll keep this nodal centroid thing Look from will keep draw body. So this draw body is going to change from balloon two to balloon. This is going to be balloon. And then we're going to pass in a draw style. What draw style you ask? We have to define that. And thankfully we created a, um, a function for that. We have a uh, struct draw style draw style equals default draw style with no parameters. And honestly, this should work. I'm, I'm prepared to see like plenty of uh, plenty of errors here. Oh, draw. Oh, actually, that's awesome. Uh, let me hold on. Bin C 105. Let me comment this out. We used that draw function before we got rid of it just now. So make run. Okay, there you go. So the goal has been accomplished. So here, if you recall, we created a, um, a new draw style. You can see that we're rendering both a fill, a green colored fill, as well as a blue wireframe. And you, the depth test is working. You can see things that are in the back are actually in the back. Things that are in the front are in the front and shown properly. There's no like weird Z fighting between um, like the lines and the fills. You can see this big black uh, here because we've we've actually clipped, our clipping plane is now too close to our part because we zoomed in, but that's to be expected. Um, yeah, besides that, we have a working part. Let me just do a quick um, change of those variables really, really quickly. Let's open up the draw.c and change the default values for our default draw style. Instead of having it be a green fill, let's do yellow. Yellow, you can change this to a, a one. Instead of it being a, Blue line, let's do a red line, I guess. And then instead of it being a black background, let's do like a, I don't know, some weird like gray looking one, probably, <laughs> I don't know. And then let's say it's gonna be a slightly thicker line. Recompile, rerun, there you go. You can see got a, we got a yellow hot air balloon, slightly thicker red lines. And the background is slightly less black. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. In the next video, I have some uh, fun stuff planned as well. Anyway, thanks for watching.